This is a Holy Cross uh, component 2 mock and this is mock number 1. And we start off with a fairly straightforward recall of knowledge uh, question for 15 marks, mitosis. We've got some various pictures, you should be fine with these pictures. If we were looking at looking at these, just scanning them without even reading the question, we'd go, right, can I see any phases that I know about? Uh, I would see prophase there, because I can sort of see chromosomes appearing. And you can see chrom chromosomes lined up at the equator, so that would be metaphase. We can see, that one's almost at two cells, so that's going to be the last stage. Um, We've got anaphase here, separation of the chromosomes or chromatids. So anaphase and this almost ready for two new cells. So that'll be a telophase. Place them in the correct sequence. Well, prophase is going to be first, so it's going to be B. Metaphase, which is A, anaphase C, and the last one is telophase D. Two marks, two fairly straightforward marks there. Name the stage. So, important here, it says name the stage, so give it its name, so not its, not its letter. Chromatids can be first be seen using a light microscope. So our first stage was B or prophase. Can we see our chromatids using a light microscope? Yes. So that's our answer there. The nuclear envelope disappears. Well, can we see the nuclear envelope? No. Nope. So it's disappeared. <laughs> and that's part of prophase as well. So these are just what you've learned from your notes. Pairs of chromatids become attached to their spindle fibers by their centromeres. So they haven't split and they're at the equator. So they haven't split and they're at the equator. That's picture A, which is metaphase. And the chromatids become chromosomes. A um, little bit confusing this, but it's, it's essentially saying that the chromatids are separated and now separate and they're, they're going to be chromosomes. So where are they separating? Well they're still together in metaphase but in anaphase they're separated so that's going to be anaphase. <clears throat> and part C, uh, photograph E shows the cell during interphase, often called a resting phase. Why is this incorrect? So saying what's processes are going on in interphase and you know these, you've learned these. So for example protein protein synthesis replication of DNA you know, replication of organisms so let's uh, put new organelles Produced. And there's three definite things there. And we could have all other things, you know, the cell would increase in size, we get more ATP production and so on. And but those are three definite things that you, you you definitely say, so I would go for those. So three fairly straightforward marks. What is the significance of mitosis and why is it important to plants? So would that remember don't say anything animalish if it's if it's asking for plants. There are some general things for mitosis that will be useful for plants. So mitosis produces genetically identical cells. And then these cells can go on to be you know, any any use whatsoever, uh, but you know, for example, for growth, 
used for growth or repair. So standard, standard answers so far. And then in plants, um, this is often a method of asexual reproduction. So for example, um, plants, uh, strawberries would send out runners and become drop a little baby plant as it were uh, somewhere else. Uh, so it could be used for asexual reproduction. And those are our three there. And we could have uh, named an example for, for Mark as well. But those are the three definite things that you should have said. <clears throat> Part E, meiosis is used to produce gametes. So a different process now uh, for sexual reproduction in mammals. And three ways that meiosis gives leads to variation. So again, absolutely straightforward. Um, variation. So we get a segregation of the alleles, a so separation of the alleles. These will get independently assorted. We'll get crossing over, and we might have we might have uh, mutations and on the chromosomes as well. And uh, we'll we'll mention in here as well. You know, we're getting gapes with a haploid number, and that allows more kind of choice to be made. So. Um, gametes will be haploid and this allows the, the pair of alleles that an organism has to be separated. So this segregates or separates the alleles. Uh, which will be randomly assorted. So, for example, the homologous pair will get separated in, in meiosis 1, and which, which one of the gametes gets each allele is, is completely random. So that's independent assortment. Uh, independent assortment. And we could also describe our classic uh, crossing over, what we might have said, formation of chiasma or chiasmata. And lastly, um, in, in this process, uh, if it was meiosis, we could get some uh, some chromosome mutations, so chromosomes attaching to each other. Not really a, a kind of normal situation, but we'll, it, it's, 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 you, you could get a mark for that. But I'll go for your, your three main marks there. <clears throat>